Hello, welcome to another episode of the Literary Lutheran Reads in Our Lutheran Middle. This episode is for Thursday, and today we continue reading through chapter 4. Jesus himself tells us the same thing in his parting words to the disciples shortly before his ascension to this exalted position at God's right hand. He, the Almighty and risen Lord, spoke words that echo down through the centuries. They are words directed to us collectively as his church, but just as much they are words addressed to each individual believer. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, verses 18 and 20. Again, Jesus does not dole out his attention in fractions. When he promises that he is with you, with me, always, to the very end of the age, that promise is absolute. He is with me, he is with you according to both his divine and human natures. He is with you, he is with me, with all of his attention, with all of his power, with all of his love and grace and protecting care. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus underscores the truth that these promises of his providence are meant for each of us as individuals. After reminding us that God provides for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field without their worry or concern, he tells us, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6, verses 30 to 33. Could there be a more complete, more generous, more reassuring promise of his providence than that? He knows and he provides for our greatest need, the need for forgiveness and eternal life. He knows and provides as well for the smallest need, our need for our next meal and change of clothes. The providence of God is not always obvious. The doctrine of the providence of God is clearly is not some abstract notion without any real or practical benefit for us as we travel the road from here to heaven. Quite the contrary. It is a doctrine that is especially useful to us as we stumble along on that road under the painful realities of a life stained by our own sin and marred by the sins of others. As a result of our sinful condition, we suffer in body and soul. We get sick. We endure the frustration of disappointed hopes for health and wealth, for family and friends. We even in our life of faith march one step forward only to fall two steps back a day later. Who isn't acquainted with these facts of life? Just when we thought we had conquered one set of temptations, a new set rises to torment our souls and when we fall to torture our consciences. Just when we thought all was going well, we get sick. Just when we thought our family lives, lives were stable, someone dies. Or the marriage that was supposed to be a dream come true turns into a sin-stained nightmare. Or the child who is the apple of the eye instead fills the eye with tears. Just when we thought our professional lives were on the right track, we get laid off. Just when we thought our finances were finally in order, a storm comes and rips a hole in the roof that insurance will not cover. Just when we thought that friends were worthy and true, one of them betrays us and leaves. Whose life has not been touched by at least some of these plagues and so many others that the number is beyond counting? Yes, how many times are there in our lives when this thought creeps in? Oh God, I thought you loved me and would take care of me. Where are you now when I seem so hopeless, helpless, and alone? Where is the promise of your providence? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads in Narrow Lutheran Middle, and I wish you all a blessed day.